Thanks for watching, and today I want to show you a very neat fact. And by the way, my office mate suggested that actually. It's really, really cool. Because there are in this world two types of real numbers. On the one hand, there are what are called algebraic numbers, which are just roots of polynomials with integer coefficients. For example, square root of 2 is an algebraic number. Why? Because, for example, square root of 2 is a 0 of x squared minus 2 equals to 0. So if you sort of x squared minus 2 equals to 0, then you get plus or minus square root of 2. So this is an algebraic number if it's a 0 of a polynomial with rational coefficients. On the other hand, there are numbers like e or pi, which are transcendental. In other words, those numbers can never be written as the zero of a polynomial with integer coefficients. And by the way, I have made two videos that show why they're transcendental. Now, there are two kinds of numbers, as I said, algebraic or transcendental. What I want to show is those numbers like e or pi, those are actually the rule and not the exception. Namely, if you pick a real number out of the hat, the probability that it's uh, transcendental is actually one. So it's a very generic thing. A general not real number, it will be transcendental sort of algebraic numbers to the exception, which is super interesting because in life you mainly deal with algebraic numbers, but it turns out transcendental numbers are way more common. And how do you do that? Namely, uh, what, what I want to show today is that you can actually count all the algebraic numbers. So claim algebraic numbers Are countable. In other words, if you had an infinite amount of time, you would actually be able to count all the algebraic numbers. They're just like the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc., etc. You can count them. And because the real numbers are un uncountable, and every real number is either algebraic or transcendental, this implies that the transcendental numbers are uncountable. Which means that there's so many of them, even if you had an infinite amount of time you count them, you wouldn't be able to do that. And that's why if you pick a real number at random, the chance that it's transcendental will be one because there's so many more transcendental numbers than uh, algebraic numbers. All right, so how do you prove that algebraic numbers are countable? First of all, here's a definition. x is algebraic if x is the root of a polynomial with a rational coefficients. If a n x to the n plus dot 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 plus a one x plus a zero equals to zero for some. So for some n, I guess n, uh, I guess positive. Okay, and n is an integer. So some people call it n star, and um, and some. A0 dot 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 up to a n uh, rational, where uh, let's see, a n is non zero. Okay, and so in other words, again, x is algebraic if x is the zero of some polynomial with rational coefficients. That's all I'm saying. And how do you show that? Now, how do you show it? So using this definition, how do you show that the algebraic numbers are countable? It's just you do it for by, step by step. First of all, suppose I give you n and I give you the coefficients. Let's see how many roots there are. So given n, n, a0 up to an, 
and with a n non-zero, then let's study the polynomial a n x n plus blah 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 plus a one x plus a zero equals to zero. How many zeros does a fixed polynomial have? It turns out just at most n. So there are just finitely many solutions of this polynomial. So it has at most n solutions. And this is by what's called the fundamental theorem of algebra. So by FTA, which I have proven in one of my videos, and there's a nice complex analysis proof of this. So this has at most n solutions. So in particular, let a n, a zero, dot, 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 a n, be the set of roots of this polynomial. Then what I've just shown is that the cardinality of this thing is less than or equal to n. In particular, for fixed n and coefficients, this thing is countable. Now, we would like to go a step further. So, again, given n and coefficients, this is countable. Now, suppose we just fix n. The question is, how many coefficients are there? So, step two. Given n, consider the following set. q cross q cross dot 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 cross q n times. Why do I consider that? Because if you look at this definition, we have that a, a0 up to a n, they're all in q. So I guess n plus 1 times. So this is sort of the set of a, a n, a n minus 1, dot, 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 a 0. And maybe I should put a q star just to specify that it's non-zero. Each of those rational set, set of rational numbers, we know they're countable. So each of those are countable. I guess you can say they can be held accountable they are countable and the, the proof is very nice it's a sort of a diagonal argument but uh, not a diagonal argument but sort of a snake like argument and I skip it there so each set of rational numbers is countable and this is countable because it's one less than the rational numbers okay and in particular if you take countable sets and you just cross them if you take the, that product it's still countable so the product of two countable sets is still countable. So by induction, the product of n plus 1 sets is still countable sets is still countable. No, I'm stipping those details. That's part of something else. So if you take our sets a n, a 0, dot, 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 a n, so the sets of roots of the polynomial, you know, a n x to the n, up to x zero, up to the n of degree n. If you take the union of that over all possible coefficients of a zero dot 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 a n in q star cross dot dot q cross dot 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 cross q, this is still countable. Let's call that bn. Why is it countable? Because it's really, by step one, this is countable. And we've shown now that this is countable. So the whole set is countable as a union of countable sets, as a countable union of countable sets. 
I know it's a yo dog moment, but it's very important. Because each set, a n up to a, a zero, a n, is countable. That's by step one. And you're taking a union over a countable set, namely this one. So it's really a countable union of countable sets, so it's countable. In other words, what have we shown? We've shown that the set of roots of polynomials of degree exactly n is countable. Now finally, how do we get to Bn, to the set of our algebraic numbers? Our algebraic numbers is if x is algebraic, if it's a root of a polynomial of some degree n. So to get our algebraic numbers, we just have to take the union of this set Bn over the natural numbers. So. Lastly, this step four, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe step three. Yeah, no, step three. So, finally, what is the algebraic numbers? That's the union from n over n star. So, in other words, n equals to one. 2 dot 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 of bn. We have just shown that bn is countable. And n star is also countable. Basically by the definition of countable. It's, you can count natural numbers. So it's also countable as a countable union. Again, countable union because of this, of countable sets. sets. And that's Bn. And that's, again, by step two. So the set of algebraic numbers is countable essentially because it's the countable union of the countable union of finite sets by this fundamental theorem of algebra. So in theory, you can just count all the uh, algebraic numbers. And in particular, the transcendental numbers is the complement. So because you cannot count the real numbers, you cannot count the transcendental numbers.